Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about the object known as Theia that approximately 4.5 billion years ago collided with planet Earth, eventually resulting in the formation of our beautiful moon. And despite this being a pretty well accepted idea today, there are still a lot of questions about this whole scenario. For example, what happened to the rest of Theia? Did it actually collide and get absorbed into Earth, or did some of it escape into some other area of our solar system? And if so, where exactly is it located today? And so in this video we're actually going to be discussing a very interesting proposition that makes a lot of sense. Theia is indeed inside our planet Earth, and it actually explains one of the phenomena we have inside our planet that we've discovered a few years ago, but that has since been sort of mysterious and extremely difficult to explain because it does create a lot of really unusual properties on our planet. The objects known as LLSVPs, also known as Large Low Shear Velocity Provinces. But let's go back in time approximately 4.5 billion years ago and start with the idea of Theia. So today a lot of scientists believe that Theia was most likely in a very similar orbit to planet Earth for at least a few million years, possibly even 100 million years. It was very likely located right here in the so-called L5 Lagrange point, which are the stable orbital points where you can place a satellite for example and it's going to stay there without falling into the sun or falling back to planet Earth. And as a matter of fact, several satellites today are in those points. And in these Lagrange points we also usually discover a lot of different Trojans like the ones that Jupiter has and so finding a large massive object there is not unusual. But it's still quite easy for an object in a Lagrange point to lose stability and to eventually start moving around the orbit and possibly even collide with one of the other objects. So for example for satellites we do need to maintain their orbits to make them stable. And so approximately 4.5 billion years ago the scientists believed that this is exactly what happened to Theia and to planet Earth. Theia itself being roughly the same size as planet Mars and Earth being a little bit smaller than it is today, with the impact itself first creating a kind of a disk of debris which then slowly coalesced creating the moon. But this is a somewhat simplified picture and you might already see a problem here. The mass and size of Theia is a lot larger than our own moon. So where is the rest of this object? At the same time how certain are we that this is exactly how the moon was created? What other proof do we possibly have showing us that this so-called collision occurred approximately 4.5 billion years ago? And even though the direct evidence for this event is a little bit difficult to find, over the past year scientists did discover a few hints suggesting that this collision did indeed occur, but more importantly that Theia chunks, those leftovers of Theia, are actually still around. And more specifically that those Theia chunks did not disappear, they did not go into the other parts of the solar system, they stayed on planet Earth and sunk to the bottom. And as you probably guessed by now, those chunks are what you see right here on the screen. They are indeed those LSVPs that scientists discovered a few years back. Now in case you don't really know, these LSVPs were discovered by using this technique known as seismic tomography. And the way the technique works is by listening to different earthquake waves and the speed of propagation of those waves and then comparing the waves forming the overall picture of what the waves most likely pass through. By using this technique the scientists can usually very accurately see what happens inside planet Earth and also detect various objects that would be otherwise invisible to us. And so by using seismic tomography long ago the scientists discovered these unusual formations inside our planet. And unfortunately even today it's not entirely clear how they were formed. But the original explanation was that they were more likely to be possibly ancient continents that sunk to the bottom of the planet. But that proposition doesn't really explain a lot of things, especially because why is it that these continents sunk but the other ones stayed on the surface? At the same time, several studies that were analyzing volcanic rocks in Iceland identified some of the samples resembling these LSVPs and were able to measure their density, discovering that their density was about 2-3% more dense than mantle of our planet. And obviously because this stuff is more dense, it would sink to the bottom, depositing on top of the outer core. Interestingly, two of these blobs located beneath Africa have been implicated in the formation of the so-called South Atlantic Anomaly, which is this relatively large magnetic hole present in the region around South America, where the magnetic field becomes so weak that even satellites passing through here do have a tendency to malfunction or even become damaged. And so the scientists today think that this part right here very likely formed because of the LSVPs 
present in the area right here. So basically we have these very mysterious, dense objects inside our planet whose origin is somewhat difficult to explain. But what is certain about them is that they've been around for a very long time. As I mentioned previously, that study that discovered those rocks in Iceland also discovered that these uh, mantelpieces were extremely old, possibly even older than the moon itself. And if we find a piece that's older than the moon, it only suggests one thing. It most likely came from that mysterious Thea. At least that's the implication that the scientists whose paper you can find in a description make after a relatively thorough analysis. The main idea, of course, being the fact that after the moon was born, the chunks of Theia eventually stayed inside our planet and sunk to the bottom, forming these LSVPs, and the remnants of Theia are still there today. Which of course would explain why we don't see Theia orbiting somewhere in the solar system, and why we don't actually have any asteroids or any meteorites landing on the planet that might have been from Theia originally. And there's quite a lot of good evidence that the scientists do provide in this paper. So, for example, we know that if we were to combine the mass of LSVPs, which is about 2 to maybe 6% of mass of planet Earth, and add them to the mass of the Moon, this does give us the average value for the prediction of the total mass of what Theia was probably like as well. At the same time, the predicted value for the density of Theia does actually come really, really close to the total value of density we discover inside of those LSVPs. The scientists today believe Theia was slightly denser, possibly about 2-3% to denser than planet Earth. And so the explanation presented in the paper is that, well, once you combine Theia and the early Earth, you'll get these chunks of Theia stuck inside of the mantle of planet Earth which will eventually solidify and form the regions that do resemble LSVPs that we find on the bottom of the mantle of our planet. And because denser material usually sinks to the bottom, that's basically why the LSVPs were formed. Theia's mantle was just denser to begin with. With these pieces here representing some sort of an iron-rich and possibly highly dense mantle, slightly more iron-rich than the mantle of planet Earth. And all of this also connects to a lot of other discoveries that suggested that these really ancient LSVPs have approximately a similar age to the original impact with Theia, with all of these studies together now giving us a pretty clear picture of what probably happened about 4.5 billion years ago. So let's try to summarize. We had two objects in the same orbit, with one of the objects becoming destabilized and eventually colliding with planet Earth. With the collision itself creating quite a lot of debris orbiting around the planet, with the other parts eventually settling inside the mantle. The debris on the outside solidified and created our beautiful moon. But the pieces on the inside were much denser and eventually sunk to the bottom of the mantle, forming what we know today as LLSVPs. The mysterious, dense and extremely massive pieces of planet Earth that is otherwise difficult to explain. The total mass here is between 2 to 6% the mass of planet Earth. And overall, this explanation actually does solve a lot of different mysteries we've had about our own planet. But whether this is a correct explanation, or whether some other explanation is going to be provided in the future, well, only time will show. For now, honestly, this is actually pretty brilliant and explains quite a lot. But in the last few months, we've made a lot of really awesome discoveries about our own planet, and so check out some of the other videos I made on the channel that should be popping up somewhere right there that talk a little bit more about the inner core and some other really cool discoveries in regards to the cooling of planet Earth. On that note, thank you so much for watching, hopefully you know a little bit more about planet Earth now, and hopefully you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support the channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow, stay wonderful, and as always, bye bye.